everyone. So today in this video we're going to be doing an overview, review and demonstration of this Bosch Series 6 WAU 28R90GB washing machine. So this machine has 9 kilogram max load, 1400 RPM spin speed and it's currently retailing for £549 on AO.com and Curry's. As you can see here on the display on the front it says it's a Series 6 model, it's got speed perfect, 9kg, eco silence drive, which is another name for an inverter motor, which makes the machine quieter, as you'll see when I do this demonstration later on in the video. So let's first look at the detergent drawer, it says Bosch on it, it's got the Bosch logo, it's in this nice reflected like mirror chrome sort of colour well not colour it's got this also mirror chrome trim here so you just pull it like this open it so on the left here as you can see possibly it might be hard to see two lines there so this is main wash and this at the back this you can pull down like that and that's for if you put liquid detergent in you can probably say it might be a bit hard, it's got measurements on it. So if you're using liquid detergent, you put that down and you put the liquid in there and it stops it just going straight down into the drum before it starts the wash. So for example, if you're doing a pre-wash and you're using liquid, you can put it in there, so that's quite good. And obviously if you're using powder, you just lift it up like that and put the powder in there. So middle is the fabric softener it's got a max line which is there at the top of that so that's where you put your softener and this is to take the drawer out which i'll show you in a minute and then the far one is for the pre-wash detergent you just put that in there taking the drawer out so you press this in like that and just pull it out and it comes out like that and i'll just show you the inside as well you see them jets there that's where the main wash goes down into the drum and then over here there's another intake there for the pre-wash and softener and that actually leads through that the cascade fill so it fills down the front of the machine which is quite good i think it's only bosch that do this they've done it for years so yeah that's quite a nice feature as well to put the drawer back in simple as that just line it up like that and i always leave the drawer slightly open just to prevent the the jets and the drawer itself going moldy so it has a chance to dry out any excess water so i'll just quickly show you basically the control panel so this in the middle this is a button the white part you press that in that's the power button so turn the machine on and off that's the only button on this machine which is i do like to be honest it makes it more simple to use and then the chrome on the outside you turn that that's the dial i'll show you i'll turn it on in a minute after i've shown the other part of the machine but there's lights around here i'll show you which setting you've got it on and this all lights up but as I said, I'll show you that in a minute because there's a lot to cover on this control panel. It's going to take me a long time. I will leave timestamps in the description to show you what parts that were on. Just in case you don't want to watch me messing with the control panel for ages because there's a lot on this control panel to cover. Next then the door and the drum. So this door's got a plastic cover so you can't actually touch that door glass. We'll note these plastic door covers scratch really easily so you might want to be careful. I actually bought this machine off the Curry's clearance outlet so the door has a few scratches on it. You can probably see there, there's one there and there's a few, there's one there somewhere, I can't even see it. There's one there as well somewhere and there's one on the side. But yeah, so these scratch really easily, so you'll want to be careful. That's one minor con of this machine. 
but it's not that really big of a deal to be honest. So this door, it doesn't have a handle, you just pull it straight and it opens. Then there's obviously the glass, there's the, the latch, it's, yeah, you just pull it and push it short, I'll show you in a minute. There's the model, and the FD means it was made in November 2020, and there's obviously that sticker there. So, let's talk about the ears with drum, 9 kilogram. it's a nice big drum. It's nice and spacious. It's 63 litres big, which is decent for a 9kg drum. It's almost the same size as a Beko 9kg drum, which is 64 litres. Um, also, Samsung's 9kg drums are 61 litres, I believe, so it's a decent size for 9kg. It's comparable with most other brands 9kg. Also, Miele, I believe, is 64 litres 9kg. The litres just means how big the drum actually is. Here is the cascade wheel which I talked about earlier. I believe this actually helps get the soft the fabric conditioner mixed in with the clothes earlier which makes them smell nicer. I'm not sure if that's what it's intended for but I have noticed a difference in the smell of the washing after I've used this machine compared to the old machine I had. So I'll show you the the special design drum, this is called, I believe, the wave drum. It's got this pattern on it, which helps be more gentle and close, I believe, along with these drum paddles. The design of them also helps to be less harsh on clothes. Most brands have a certain design of drum these days. This is just Bosch's one. I think nearly every brand has a unique sort of drum design to try and be less harsh on clothes but this is quite a good attempt to be honest and these paddles 20 years ago with the Bosch washing machine drums they had similar design paddles to these so it's nice that they've kept the same design because clearly it must be a good design if they've kept it that long yeah, that's the drum another slight con I've noticed this back feels quite flimsy I've noticed here, especially the drum itself feels really solid. I don't think it'll have any issues bending or anything like that, like some machines. But the back plate feels quite thin and flimsy. But the paddles and the actual drum itself feel good and the seal is nice and thick. It's a lot thicker than, for example, the old Beckham machine. See the hole at the bottom there. And I like that there's no gap there. The old Beckham had a gap there and stuff constantly went down inside the machine. And it was quite annoying. At the top there is the... This is a load deflector, so when the machine's spinning, if there's something like an object to close and rubbing around the drum seal, that just basically pushes it back in to the drum. That's everything I have to say about this drum. This glass is quite deep, I've noticed, so if you fill the machine to like, well, kind of overload the machine, you'll notice it's hard to close the door, which to be honest is quite good, so it stops you from overloading the machine. Nice metal hinge, won't have any issues with that. Door itself is really solid, as you can see. Barely moves. So yeah, it is nice solid quality, ignore the state and nails. But yeah. And that's how you shut it, you just push it straight. You don't have to pull a handle like on my old machine for example. So I can see this being more reliable because there's no handle that can be snapped off. Which is quite a common problem for some machines. Yeah, I think that's all I have to talk about the door. Again, I always leave this open to prevent the seal, for example, going mouldy because it lets it dry out all the water. That's another thing you should do, really. Along with the drawer. So yeah, that's all I have to say about the drum and door. So this, this is the pump filter. So 
you'd open this, you push down on that and pull this. This is another thing I kind of don't like, it feels quite weird to open and it feels a bit flimsy. I think it's that there, it's like a sort of a square so it makes it quite hard to open. This does come out I believe when you're opening all the way, I'm not sure actually. I believe it comes out completely. Thought it did. Maybe not. So this here is a hose, obviously. You pull this plastic thing off the end to drain the water out of the machine and the pump. For example, if this pump gets blocked and the machine can't drain and it's full of water, you empty this into a bucket or something to get all as much water out as you can before you open this because water will just go everywhere. So that makes it easier. That you unscrew to get the pump filter, so if there's anything stuck in there, it'll most likely be in there. I haven't had to open this yet, thankfully. And this here is an emergency door release, so if there's a power cut and the machine is stuck shut, you just pull that down, and I think you have to pull the door open at the same time as pulling that down, so you can access the laundry you've got in there. It's quite good, really. Yeah, I do believe this comes out. The bottom thing, I'm not sure. Maybe not. Maybe I'm mistaken. So yeah, it does feel a bit weird. It just shuts like that. So yeah, that's that. As I used for the awkward angle, not really got much room here, but here's the energy labels for the machine. The one on the left is the new 2021 EU regulations energy label, so it's C rated on there. And as you see, that's the values of what it uses 66 kilowatt hours for 100 cycles, I believe. I don't fully understand this, to be honest. So it's 9 kilogram. The 3 hours 37 is the time that Eco 4060 cycle takes, which I'll go through in a minute. 44 litres is the amount of water it uses on that cycle. B is the spin performance of that cycle again. And 72 decibels is the noise at full spin speed, which is A rated. It is nice and quiet, which I'll show you in the demonstration later. This is the old energy label. So it was rated A++++, so it's quite different. I'm not sure how the C rating works, I'm not sure if it takes the Eco 4060 or if it takes it from different cycles. It probably does take it from the Eco 4060. So yeah, this is, I believe this one is rated from the Cotton Eco, old, the old Cotton Eco cycle, which I'll go through again later. As you can see, it says it uses 152 kilowatt hours per year. It uses 11,220 litres of water per year. And again, 9 kilogram B spin. 48 decibels on wash, which is nice and quiet. And then again, 72 decibels on spin. That's the energy labels, both of them. And you can't really get a good angle because of the position, but. As you can see, the design of this side panel is designed to reduce vibrations and noise. When it's on spin, it stops the panels from vibrating. Most machines have a design like this. Probably a different design, but some form of design to help reduce vibrations. But this is, again, Bosch's take on it. And it is nice and quiet on spin, which, again, you'll see in the demonstration later on. So that's all I have for the side, and obviously on that side it's got the same, but you can't see it because the dry is there. So yeah, that's all I have to say about that. Alright, so quickly, just before I go through the control panel, I'm just going to go over the dimensions of the machine. So if you're considering getting this machine, you obviously want to make sure that it's going to fit in the space. So the width is standard. It is 60 centimetres wide. The height is also standard, 84 centimetres wide. Nearly all machines have then values for the width and height. But the depth is where it matters. This machine, because it's 9 kilograms, it's quite deep. It's 63.2 centimetres. 
on what AO says there, but it, you might need a bit wider because I don't think it accounts for this and the door protruding. And that just accounts for from here to the back. I'm not sure, I might be wrong about that, but I think it might be. I don't think it counts the dial, but I might be wrong again. So that's an idea of how deep you'll want it to be. Obviously, my work top's quite deep, so it fits nice and easily, but if you've got quite a shallow work top, then you might have to get a smaller machine. For example, a Bosch Series 4 which is only eight kilogram, is I think only 55 centimeters deep because they have to make the machines deeper to fit a big drum in. So yeah, you'll want to make sure that your machine fits before you order, obviously. Right, let's get onto this control panel. This is gonna take me probably quite a long time because there's a lot to go through. So let's turn it on with this middle button, the power button. You have to hold it in for a second to turn it on and off, and you'll notice all the lights light up when it makes that noise to let you know it's turned on. So as soon as you turn it on, it defaults to the Eco 4060 cycle, which is the new energy label cycle. So I'll go through all of this display as we go. So on this cycle, it does not display a temperature because it's set it automatically depending on the size of the load you put in. So this cycle is designed for you to wash stuff that can be washed at 40 degrees and 60 degrees in the same wash to save energy because you don't have to separate them into two loads. That's the idea behind this cycle. So I'll go through what it does. So. If you load two and a half kilograms into this cycle, it'll wash at 26 degrees and it'll reduce the time. I don't know what it'll reduce to because I've only tried this cycle once with a full load. But yeah, it'll, it'll wash at 26 degrees with a two and a half kilogram load. If you load four and a half kilograms, which is half load, It'll wash at 33 degrees, I believe it is, and it'll probably reduce the time as well, but not as much as it would with a two and a half kilogram load. And if you wash a full nine kilogram, it'll take that time, the three hours 35 that they estimate, it won't reduce it, and it'll wash at 39 degrees. They're like about what it'll wash at. I'm not, it probably might differentiate a bit, but. You know, that's the idea. So it won't reach over 40, so you can wash 40 degree stuff in here and it won't ruin it. If that's what you're worried about. So let's go through the options then. So it allows a full 1400 spin, you can change that if you want, down to 400. On some cycles you can have no spin, but on this cycle you can't because it's not lit. I do like this display because the options that you can have it shows, it lights them up dimly, so you know obviously what you can, you can't have temperature on this cycle. You can have, so these four red options here are stains, the anti-stain system. So this first one is grease and oil stain. As you can see here, I'll go through that in a second, but this stain increases the water level for the wash and the rinses I believe. I believe it also heats slightly more, not a lot more, like a few degrees more than it was without it. And it may change the wash and rinse action as well, but I haven't made notices to be honest. Next one is wine stain, which increases the water level for the wash and rinses again, I believe. But on this one, it heats up in stages, I've noticed, because wine stains are easier to remove at cooler temperatures so it spends longer at colder temperatures before it heats up to the full temperature then we've got blood stain here which as you can see increases the time by quite a lot because i haven't tried this one yet but i believe it does a what either a one hour or a one and a half hour soak in the wash i'm not sure what else it does it probably changes a few other things as well but i haven't tried it yet so can't really tell you, but I know it adds a soak to the wash. It probably does change the wash actions and the heating and all that as well. 
Yeah, and the final one is Grass Stain, which I believe this one, I don't think it changes the water levels on this, but it probably changes the wash actions, and I think it might heat slightly higher as well. So yeah, that's the stain system. Right, so this option here is water plus for the wash, and you can have either one, two, or three extra rinses if you really wanted to. As you can see. And that also increases the water level for the wash. I don't think it changes the water level for the rinses. Yeah, so you can have up to three extra rinses if you really need to. Which is good if you've got allergies to detergent or you've got sensitive skin. You won't have trouble with rinsing on this machine. This one is pre-wash, which obviously has a wash before the main wash. I believe it does heat on the pre-wash on some cycles, I don't think it does on all of them. Yeah, and I'll do a spin after it and then go on to the main wash. So obviously if you've left that you need to put detergent in the pre-wash section of the drawer as well. So this one is reduced ironing, which as you can see it lowers the spin. You can change up to 1200, but what this option does is on most cycles, it changes the final spin to what's called an interval spin pattern. So it'll do the final spin in stages and do tumbles in between to reduce creasing. So for example, it'll do a first phase of the spin, go go up to about 400 RPM. Then it'll stop, do a few tumbles and then do another one at like 600, for example. Like, yeah, it's usually four phases up to the full speed. On some cycles it's different, but that's mostly what it does. I think it changes the wash and rinse actions as well on some of the cycles, because when I tried it on Easy Care, it changed the rinse tumbles to faster ones. So yeah, it does change other things to cycle two. Next one is, that's rinse hold, so it'll stop with the final rinse water and just sit there. I haven't tried this. I'm not sure if it'll tumble occasionally, like some machines do. As you can see on the progress light, the final spin's gone out because it waits for you. It just sits there until you decide if you want to spin it or you want to just drain it out. So that does. By the way, yeah, they're the progress light. I think pre-wash shows up, as you can see, I've not even got pre-wash on. But pre-wash shows up on cycles that do a dry load sense before the main wash. Which is a bit strange really, I'm not sure why it does that, but as you can see that doesn't change anything on the status. Right, anyway, next option is night wash, which as you can see, that's lowered the spin. I hope you can see that clearly, it's a bit hard to see in daylight. Yeah, it lowers the spin and you might have heard that all of the sounds have gone off as well. It cancels the end sound at the end of the cycle and also lowers the spin. And it probably does change, you can still increase it to 1400, but I believe it changes some, I think it might change the uh, tumble action as well to make the machine quieter while it's washing and rinsing. And it probably changes the spins between the rinses and all that as well. I haven't tried this option yet, but I believe that's what it does. Right, turn it off. Right, this one here is actually the settings. So, press it once. This is the volume of the end signal at the end of the cycle, so you can you can turn it off if you want to by putting it to zero. You can do one, two, it just gets louder. That's four, that's really loud. I leave it on two, I don't want it to be that loud. I don't need it to be that loud. Because I'm usually here when it finishes anyway. Next is the volume of the touch sounds, so we can turn them off as well if you want to. I leave that on two as well because I don't want it to be too loud. This is the display brightness, so you can change that down to one, which you can probably barely see. Two, three, four, I leave it on full. And then this one, it doesn't display a light, but this is drum clean reminder. So, 
it's quite smart really if the machine notices that you haven't washed that above 40 degrees for a while then a light will flash on the display that's gone off but yeah a light will flash on the display telling you to run the drum clean cycle which i'll go over in a minute but yeah you can turn that off if you want to as well i just leave it on but i wash at 60 a lot so it doesn't really i don't think it'll ever come up for me this star one at the end which i haven't set up is for a memory program so for example if you turn the dial and all that well yeah if you change some of the settings and you turn it off that cycle it'll go back to that the default but if you if you want to use a cycle with certain settings for every, like if you just want to use one cycle with like certain settings like for example grease stain with pre-wash and all that you can press that star button and it'll save them settings so if you go off that and go into something else and then you press that star button again it'll just take you straight back to what you would what you set it to which is quite good so yeah i haven't used that though because i use a different cycle for everything so there's no point setting that up so these two which i've talked about before the top one's water usage and the bottom one's electricity usage I believe these are in some way indic like indicative of how efficient it is per kilogram to wash because if you notice when I change that it says 9.0 that is the load the recommended full load you meant to wash on the cycle so I believe that's how efficient it is to wash like water and electricity efficient so as you can see if I change this the water usage goes up and if I put like pre-wash on the electricity goes up put that on it goes up again so yeah that's just an indicator of how much electricity and water a cycle uses again I do believe it's indicative of how much how efficient it is per kilogram because some of the shorter cycles that only allow like four kilogram they say they use more so yeah that's what that is right this here the minus and plus is the delay start which it's a delay end actually so as you can see three hours 35 that means it'll finish in four hours it doesn't mean it'll start in four hours that makes sense and you can increase this it might take a while i think it goes up to 24 hours Twenty four and then it goes back, yeah, that's twenty four hours max. So if you want it to finish in a certain time, you set that and it and it'll finish in for example five hours. It won't it doesn't mean it'll start in that time, it'll finish in that time, if that makes sense. So yeah, let's go on to cottons so I can show you the temperature. Again it'll say nine kilogram and I can also show you this option as well. So these lights are the temperature can't have it on eco so 90 60 40 30 20 in cold as you can see the electricity is changing as it change that notice on 90 the water goes up that's because it doesn't cool down at the end of the wash so it doesn't drain out 90 degree water and possibly damage your plumbing so again you can have the same spin speed you can't have no spin on this cycle you can have this the speed which if you press that shortens the time but you can only have five kilogram on the speed setting or well, it only recommends five kilogram you can wash a full load on cycles that say well on some cycles that say like four or five kilogram it'll add time though to make sure that it still washes properly but it won't have a, it won't have a lot of time but it'll add some time on to make sure it still washes and rinses properly and all that that's quite good so as you can see when i press that the electricity and water both go up because it's less efficient per kilogram because i'll only be washing five kilogram on this cycle it's less efficient than washing a full nine kilogram on that cycle if that makes sense 
So yeah, you can have all of the options on this, so oops, didn't mean to press that. So that's cottons. Yeah, if I shut the door, this light will flash, that's a start button. That means you can start the machine. And that's also a pause button, so if you press that while it's on, pause. And it'll let you unlock the door and open the door if it's safe to do so. So if the water level is too high or the water temperature is too high, it won't let you open the door. But it will if it's safe. As you can see, when I open the door, it displays the load size again. So that's it for cottons. Right, cotton colour. As you can see, that's really long. It's 9 kilogram again. Right, I don't know why they've called it cotton colour. Because this is actually the old cotton eco cycle. So... For example, these will all reach the set temperatures, but cotton colour won't. For example, 90 is shorter for some reason, but that'll only reach about 75 or 80. It won't reach 490, but it'll wash it a bit longer, so it achieves the same performance as it was on a 90. I'm not sure what the rest heat to. This probably... Probably less than 40 degrees on 60. That's probably somewhere less than 30. And then, I don't know about these. I've, I haven't tried this cycle yet. But I will do eventually. I'll do a video of it. As you can see, you can't have speed on this because it's an eco cycle. I do like how you can still have all the stains though. Actually, that increases quite a lot. This cycle can go quite long. This is the longest cycle you can do. I believe it's with that. Six hours, 18. That is really long. I'll try that one day. But, not now. As you can see, pre-wash is lit again. And it does that on cotton normal as well. Because all three of them do a dry sense phase at the start where it just tumbles before it fills to try and guess how much washings in there. It also keeps sensing when it fills with water to see how much water gets absorbed. That's how it detects the load. So for example, cotton standards without speed will shorten if it senses a smaller load. I think it shortens about an hour 15 off the time. It did when I used 40 with a small load. Also that as well, speed, I believe, increases the wash temperature slightly along like with the stains you can't have stains and speed together i've noticed so yeah speed increases the temperature slightly possibly increases the water level slightly as well because that does go up yeah that's that so yeah cotton color i do like how you can have all the options even on both eco cycles that's quite good really I shouldn't see the electricity and water both the same. Anyway, I think that's all for cotton colour. It's an eco cycle. It even says in the manual it's an energy saving cycle. So, and the temperatures aren't going to be exactly what you set. Right, easy care. So this one is recommended for 4 kilogram. It's 2 hours 28, which in my opinion, that's too long for an easy care. So I haven't used it without speed. With speed, it's only 47 minutes, which is really good. That doesn't change the load size either. You can still do four kilograms. Also, I believe that's too long for the standard cotton as well. And that's quite long, but that's eco. I don't know why cotton 90 is shorter than the rest, but anyway. Yeah, so 60 is shorter than the rest as well on this, which is strange. Not sure why it's like that. All the rest of like 20, like two hours. Can have all the stains on this. Then three don't add time on most of the cycles, but this one adds the soak. Also has a pre-wash as well, actually. I didn't realise that. You can have the three extra rinses. You can have pre-wash, which is shorter on this than some of the other cycles. It might not heat on this cycle, on the pre-wash, but I don't know. It does on the others, I think. And I've reduced iron, which reduces that to 600, but you can still change it back. Does the IVF spin. 
it changes the inter and spins and it changes the rinse tumbles on this cycle and it may change the wash tumbles but I'm not sure if it does yeah, unfortunately that speed 40 10 minutes 60 is a bit longer but that's still a decent time see it uses more electricity look at all the others as well night wash and all that so mix those i have done another video of every cycle and option on this machine but i'll just go through the basically what it does so as you can see this is four kilograms this is only an hour left this is quite a good cycle for the most washing to be honest because you can do up to 60 which adds a bit of time and that's 57 minutes do a full 1400 spin on this cycle if you do a bigger load than four kilogram it'll add on some time it'll do a longer final spin and it'll do a longer wash as well so on this you have speed which makes it 45 minutes 60 is an hour five Quite good, really. And you can have all the stains as well. I just don't have time for from that one. So blood stain must do a pre-wash as well. I haven't used it yet, but I will eventually. You can have up to three extra rinses on this. You can have a pre-wash, which is half an hour long, so it probably heats on the pre-wash. You can have reduced iron, which changes the... I think it only changes the final spin on this. Oops, can have rinse hold, can have silent wash which adds time probably to the wash because it'll do slower tumbles I believe for the wash so it just washes for a bit longer. Right, delicate and silk, it's quite a short cycle, it's only for 2 kilograms. It'll add a bit of time if you put more than that in, so you can go up to 40, you can do 800. You can still do all the stains, which they do add a bit of time on this cycle, even the other three. That one adds a bit less for some reason. And the blood stain adds on a pre-wash and all that. You can do three extra rinses on this if you want. You can do pre-wash, which isn't that long, so it might not heat on the pre-wash. Do reduced iron, which you can still set it to 800, it adds a bit of time. You can do rinse hold, and you can do night wash, which adds time again probably the slower tumbles in the wash again i haven't tried the night wash option yet but i will do eventually i'll do a video of it right the wall cycle this is quite a big con of this machine this cycle is just terrible it really is i've filmed it it'll come out eventually but it's bad so you can do up to 40 down to cold Oh yeah, I also noticed you can do no spin on delicate, but you can't on the rest. Yeah, so you can do 800, no spin, more. You can do rinse hold, you can do night wash, which lowers the spin. Yeah, so this cycle is terrible. So half of the main wash, once it's heated, it doesn't tumble at all to it drains. It does one tumble. The first two rinses don't tumble, apart from when they start draining. It does spins between the rinses which go up to 800 which is quite good and then the final rinse does one tumble and then it does a final spin at 800. The spins, the balancing for the spins is less sensitive on this cycle because it's probably designed just to wash one wall jumper so it's less sensitive to unbalanced loads on this cycle so it doesn't waste time trying to balance but that's probably the only good thing about this cycle. The rest of it is just terrible. For delicate, I'm just going to use delicate, I'm not going to use this cycle again because it is terrible. Anyway, enough of that. Onto rinse, which is just one rinse by default. It doesn't display a load size for this cycle. Do up to 1400 if you want. You can do reduced iron if you want. You can have no spin on this, so you can just do a rinse and drain. That's one rinse, so you can do two, three or four rinses if you want. You can do a rinse hold if you want. You can't do night wash, which is a bit weird. I'm not sure why, but anyway, onto spin, which is a full cotton final spin, doesn't display a load. You can do 1400, or you can just do a drain on its own, which is no spin. 
I'm not sure why these two default to 1200 spin. It's a bit weird, but... And you can do reduced iron if you want, which is a more gentle spin. It does the IBS spin pattern. So it's that. It's got a decent spin on recycle. It's a default cotton spin. Right, it's drum clean. Is run out now, you see it has zero kilograms. You're not meant to wash anything on this cycle. If you do put something in on this cycle, I believe it cancels it because it senses at the start. So for this, you're meant to just put like citric acid's good or a dishwasher tablet is good to clean the drum. You just put that straight in the drum, I believe. It doesn't do a pre wash on this cycle, so you can just do that. So as you can see, it doesn't display a temperature, but I believe it's at 90 degrees and it's 1200 spin, which you can't change. 1 hour 10, which is good for a drum clean because some of them are quite long. The only option you have is night wash, which just removes the sound at the end. As you can see, it doesn't do a proper rinse on this cycle, so if you do use like quite a harsh clean and sort of thing when you use this, you might want to do a rinse and spin after it, just to get all that out before you do washing. Anyway, sportswear, which is quite a short cycle for sportswear to be honest, I think two kilogram. I would have thought it'd be a bit longer because sportswear is usually quite stained, but you know, this cycle does the IVS spin pattern by default. So if you select reduced iron, all that does, actually it might, I think it might shorten the wash and it might cancel the spins between the rinses. I haven't tried this with reduced iron, but as you can see it shortens the time. So yeah, but this cycle does the IVS spin by default. So yeah, I'm not sure all that changes. Do a pre-wash, which adds on 19 minutes. You can do the stains, which add a bit of time on this, because it's quite a short cycle. Do blood, which adds the pre-wash and soak. Rinse hold, night wash. It's that. It's a decent cycle for sportswear, but it's a bit short, I think. Oh, oh well, it's still decent. Shirt, which again is only two kilograms. You can go up to 60, which adds three minutes. You can go down if you want. Again, this cycle does IVS by default. The IVS final spin. Reduced iron on this is weird. I'll go through that in a minute. So you can do stains, which add time again. Blood stain adds pre wash and soak. Do that three extra rinses on this. Can on that as well. Which adds that time on. So for some reason my phone decided to stop filming midway through that. But anyway, so went on to shirts. You can obviously add up to 60, which adds a bit of time. We have those as well. 800 max. You can add the stains, which adds five minutes. And there's blood stain, which adds on a pre-wash and soak. You can add three extra rinses on this cycle if you want. I have a pre-wash which is 19 minutes long. I've since found out that this pre-wash does heat. I think this one heats to 30, but the cycles that take half an hour for the pre-wash, they may heat to 40. But I don't know to be honest. I'm just guessing that. Right, reduced iron on this cycle, as you can see, lowers that down to 400 and it also drops the time quite a lot. On this cycle, reduced iron only does the first stage of the interval final spin which is a 400 rpm burst and i believe it does change all the wash action as well but i'm not too sure but yeah it slows all the spins down to 400 and the final spins obviously much shorter and you can have rinse hold and night wash which again lowers it to 400 but you can still change that and it adds a few minutes on Next is Dark Wash, which on some Bosch machines is called Easy Care Plus or Easy Care Dark, but it's not Dark Wash in this one, so it's 40 max, 1200 max. This cycle does the IVS final spin by default, so reduce the iron on, on this cycle, you can still have the same speed. All it does is it extends the anti crease at the end, that's it. Other than that, it's exactly the same. You can have a pre-wash on this cycle, which is 19 minutes, so it's probably 30 degrees. 
and have three extra rinses on this cycle. This cycle does three rinses by default, so you can have up to six rinses if you really want that for some reason. You can have the stains, which don't add time, apart from that one, which had the pre-wash and soak. You can have rinse hold. You can have night wash, which reduces that and adds a bit of time. Whoops. And you can have speed, which takes off only 11 minutes of the main wash. Everything else is still the same. And then, whoops, super quick, 30 minutes. As you can see, this cycle, the pre-wash light has come up. Even though it's, you can't even have a pre-wash. This cycle does a dry sense on the 30 minute version. As you see, that goes out. It doesn't do it on the 15 minute version. As you can see, 4 kilogram for the 30 minute version. And 2 kilogram for this version, the 15 minute. So, you can change that to 1200. It doesn't have any time on. The 40 degree version is 35 minutes. And 20 minutes with speed. Can do three extra rinses even with speed if you want do rinse hold and you can do night wash which allows the spin so that's it for all the cycles that i believe is everything covered on the display yeah so mostly the cycle time is mostly good these three well these four i'd say quite long without speed obviously and so you can't have speed so yeah, that's that that's all the cycles nice and easy to use i do really like this display i like how everything you can have is just there and everything you can't have is not there so you won't get confused anything nice responsive dial And to be honest, the display is nice and responsive. It's better than I thought it'd be. And then, obviously, you just turn it off like that. So that's all the display covered. Right, let's now go through what I do like about this machine. So, firstly, the design. I love the design. It's nice modern looking, especially the display. Looks really nice. It looks much better than the old Becker did, which looked quite outdated to be honest. Even though that design was quite old. Yeah, that's the first thing. The second thing is the nice big nine kilogram drum, and the design of it itself is nice. Nice and big. Next thing, it's very flexible, as you can see, with programming times and all that. It's really good. Also, the build quality is really good. It's much better than the old Beko, even though that was decent quality in itself. But this is really good, as you can see. It doesn't budge at all. That does slightly, but it's not bad at all. Dial only moves slightly. That feels solid enough. The drawer, every drawer shakes. I don't know why people compare machines in this way. But the drawer itself. The drawer itself moves slightly, but I think the old Becker did more. The inside of the drawer. No, it's a drawer, it's good quality more. For what it is. Door is much better than the old Becker. Glass is obviously. Apart from this, this scratches really easily, but other than that, it's good quality and that filter flap slightly bad quality but it doesn't move the metal the side panels almost don't move either so it is really a good quality machine that doesn't budge either also this is metal this outer rim or it's at least plated in metal you can tell by feeling it it's definitely metal in some way which i was surprised about to be honest didn't expect that. It's obviously plastic. It does feel really solid. It doesn't creak or anything like that. So yeah, it is a good quality machine. Bosch definitely still have quality in them. I think I, think I mentioned the display. I really like the display. It's so easy to use, really. 
At first it may look complicated, but it's not at all once you get used to how it works and all that. It is really easy to use. The thing I like is performance in every aspect is much better than my old machine, especially rinsing. Rinsing's the main reason I replaced my old machine with this, because the rinsing on my old machine was much worse. This machine, everything that comes out of this machine smells much better than it did out of my old machine. I think that's because it washes and rinses way better. And the spin performance is really good as well. My old machine was 1500 RPM and this is 1400, but this spins the same if not better than my old machine did. Especially, I've tried the Eco 40 to 60 cycle once, and that spends 15 minutes at 1400 RPM. So, yeah, that's spun really well. Another thing I like is the door, again. It's easier to use because there's no handle. Just pull it open, which falls out. It's got an instant unlock, which my old machine didn't have, which was highly annoying. So, yeah, I'm very glad that this machine's got an instant unlock. It really is a big deal coming from a machine that doesn't have one. The minor thing which I do like, which I've noticed about this machine is compared to my old Beko, when it's filling and it stops filling, the old Beko used to make a very loud bang in the pipes in my house. But on this one it doesn't, like nowhere near as much. I'm not sure how it I'm not sure how it does that to be honest, but it's definitely an improvement over the Beko for that which is nice. We go over the things I don't like as well. So first things, the wall cycle is terrible. It's useless pretty much because it basically won't rinse at all because it doesn't tumble. It only tumbles in the last rinse once, which is really stupid. I don't know why they programmed it like that. But yeah, I won't be using the wall cycle again. I'll just use the delicate cycle for delicate items. Um, next thing is that back plate of the drum is flimsy. It's not really a big deal, but I feel like it might dent if I wash my maybe shoes in it, so I always put them in pillowcases. And also this scratches very easily. And finally that is feels quite weird when you open it. But that's all that I don't like about this machine. Oh, so the cotton colour cycle is a bit useful. I don't know why they call it cotton colour, because it's actually the old cotton eco. Although they can't call cycles eco anymore because of this new regulation. But cotton colour is a bit of a weird name choice for that, for that cycle, sorry. Right, so I did say previously a pro of this machine, well a good point to this machine, is that there's a lot of flexibility in the cycle, so there's a lot of quick cycles there's also quite a lot of long cycles as well but a slight con i'd say is the cotton's standard cycle and the easy care standard cycles without speeds that are both too long now the cotton cycle will take off an hour and 15 ish minutes well it does on 40 at least because that's the one i've tried if you load a smaller load but i'm not sure about easy care without speed I haven't tried that, but both of them are quite long in my opinion. I'd rather about two and a half hours for cotton and like less than two hours for the easy care because both of them are a bit too long in my opinion. I just want to add another thing which is a slight con about this machine is that sometimes, mostly, it'll mostly do this if you put a full, like heavier, big load in. Sometimes it can limit the final spin from the full speed. I've seen it limit down to about 1200, it usually doesn't go lower than that. If I didn't see it limit, to be honest, I probably wouldn't notice, but it can do that quite easily. Like, sometimes it does it on like the second try of balancing. So, that can be slightly annoying, but it doesn't really bother me because the spin performance, as I said, I wouldn't even notice if I didn't actually see the machine limit. Yeah. Another thing also, which is slight con about this machine, I think it's just a minor design fault, is that sometimes, well, most of the time actually, after a cycle, water can drip out of this. Especially, it mostly does it if you open the drawer, after, like straight after the cycle, do that a little bit. 
water can drip out of this. That's just condensated on underneath the drawer. And it drips down and goes down the front of the machine. So usually I've got to wipe up that. Or I've got to shut the door and sh shake that out before I open the door. I think it's just a minor design fault. But if you forget to wipe it and you leave it wet, it, I feel like it could cause the machine to rust in this sort of area where it drips down. I will put a video of this problem in the review after I've done the demonstration because I'll show you what it does. And also water can stay on this glass underneath and drip down onto there as well, so sometimes I have to wipe the bottom of the glass. But they're only minor design faults of this machine. So I'm just going to show you this. This is the slight design fault that I was talking about. It might be hard to see because of the plastic, but when I open this drawer, you'll see some water drip out of that, the cascade. So, as you can see, that happens basically every time after a cycle. Coins the way, so I usually just shake that out. I always lift that back up after I'm done. Give it a shake out, see how that see there's still water dripping down. That's only slight design fault on this machine. And then it'll drip out the seal, so I've got to wipe that. Because I don't want this bottom to rust. So that's that. Oh, and also another slight thing with this drawer. This applies to a lot of machines, to be honest, and not just this Bosch, but if you do like a 90 cycle, or sometimes it can happen on a 60, condensation can drip out of the drawer because it's a hot cycle. So that'll happen throughout the cycle. Well, a lot of machines do this. The old Beko did it, and I've seen a lot of other machines do it. So it's not just Bosch, really. So all in all, I would rate this machine... I'd say a 9 out of 10. It's nearly perfect, I'd say. Apart from the few things I mentioned that I don't like. Obviously, there's the Series 8 ones, which afford that the 4D jet inside. And they've also got a different pump, which makes them quieter. And it makes the wash performance slightly better. But this one honestly washes well enough for me, especially with all the stain options. I've never really, like, needed the 4D to wash something better with the options this has already so yeah this machine is pretty much nearly perfect was also like a 1600 spin but i don't really need that either because this machine spins well enough anyway it spins as good if not better than the old beko did with a 1500 spin so yeah i would rate this a 9 out of 10 i definitely recommend it even at its full retail price at 550 I would say it's definitely worth it. I've also bought the five year warranty on this. It's an extra ninety but eighty-nine pounds. I can't say anything about the reliability of this machine yet because I've only had it for just over a month, but time will tell and obviously I've got that warranty, so if it does go wrong then I'm all set. Yeah. I'm Happy with this machine, it does a much better job than the old Becker did. The old Becker weren't a terrible machine, but it did have a lot of flaws which I didn't like, which is why I replaced it. I may go into more detail at some point of why I replaced the Becker, I might make a video about that. But I'm not sure I might do that. So, yeah, this was my review of this Bosch Series 6 washing machine. Hope you enjoyed this. I may do more reviews in the future, I'll probably do one of the dryer eventually, if you'd like this. Right, so now I'm going to run a cycle in this machine with some washing to demonstrate how it works. Noise levels and all that. So let's get on with it, so let's pull the door to open it. Just got to stamp this in. There's a bit of a sort of go in. Ah, let's go to the drawer. Let's go to the drawer. And we're actually going to be using liquid for this load. So we'll lower that down. I'm using the aerial. 
Here's the measuring guides, as you will. That's about 40 millimetres, maybe. I don't know why I'm shot on that, because I also need to screw the stuff there. Oops. Just using some Lenore outdoorable stuff there. The pink one, let me just pour that in there. It's super concentrated, so it's barely anything in there. I don't think you'll ever need to fill it up to max. So that's the amount I've put in for that. So we'll just shut that. So let's turn the machine on. The button. For this wash, I'm just going to do a mixed mode at 40 degrees. Um, I'm not going to use any of the options because I don't feel like I need to. So obviously, make the door shut. This will be flashing, and I'll just press start. Door locks, as you can hear. And see the machine fill with water through the door there. So, what it's doing now, it's obviously going to keep water in. If you don't know, you can move the camera. So, what it'll do now is it's just going to soak the load. Now this load may, it may detect this load as a larger than 4 kilogram load. If it does this on this program, it'll cut the um, saturated phase short and it'll just go onto the main watch as soon as it senses a bigger load. So that it has more time to heat up to the correct temperature and all that. Also on this cycle, if it senses a bigger load, It'll do a longer final spin so that um, it'll come out more dry because, as standard, this cycle does a shorter final spin. So, yeah, if it tends to be bigger on this cycle, it'll do a longer one, which is good because that means it'll take less time to dry. So, it is quite good, really. So, you can, you can get away with doing a bigger one on this cycle easily. But it will take longer. I'm not sure if this one will have to add more time on. But this one is... I'd say this is a bit bigger than the 4 kilogram it recommends. So as you can see, it's, it's now taken in the detergent. As you can see, it's not coming down the door. It's taken the detergent now. I won't bore you too much with the machine in action. I'll just record a few parts of it so you can see what it's doing through the cycle. So I'll probably come back once it's finished saturating and it's on the main one. So I'll see you then. So on this occasion, as I mentioned it before, it's gone straight to the wash after just three minutes because it sends the bigger load than four kilogram, which is probably because of that dressing now. This machine mainly senses the bottom of the one size by just sensing how much water it absorbs. So obviously I've got quite an absorbent dressing now in there to me. See that as quite a big load. On some cycles, as I mentioned in the um, overview part of the video, it does a dry sense at the start as well, but on them cycles it also does sense the absorbency as well. We'll say on the cotton cycle it does take quite a while for it to drop the time. It took about half an hour when I used it. But it does do it eventually. As I said, I'm not sure if Easy Care reduces the time with a small load if you don't use the speed option. 
I'm not sure, to be honest. I should see it's still that water. Also, the super quick, it's 30 minute one, without speed, it does a dry sense as well. I believe if you wash a bigger load on that, it'll add some time to make sure that it'll still wash properly even at a short time, which is quite good to be honest. I'd much rather that than it keep the time the same and then you're just left with washing it up the entire pocket at all. So it is quite good really. You can see on here, you can still change the temperature and you can still change all the options even though it's already started. When the machine heats, when the heater turns on, all of these will go out and you can't change anymore. And when the machine goes into spin, all of these go out as well, and all the others as well, through the cycle. Which is quite good, that again it just shows you what you can change, and what you can't. It makes it much less confusing. So, I will come back later on, and it's heating probably. I won't bore you too much again with all of this. I've got many other videos of full cycles if you really want to watch them. The machine is heating now, as you can see the temperature lights are all gone. You can see it is washing nicely. I've chosen uses four bars of water and electricity, so it's quite an inefficient cycle because it's for a short, well, it's for a small load and it's short. I believe the shorter cycles on this machine heat slightly more than the longer ones because the longer ones have longer time to wash, so you can get away with heating slightly less and use less water in the main wash and probably the rinse as well because they've got more time to get a full of main wash with less heat and less water if that makes sense so that's why we do recommend to use longer side doors for bigger loads So we've been washing for quite a while now. This feels warm, I've got nowhere to go on it. I have ten feet of each other exactly because that plastic is in the way. We've got 32 minutes left, it's estimated. So it'll probably drain quite soon and go onto the spins and the rings of which I'll fill a couple of and then I'll what that does. Still doing the intensive wash tumbles which are quite good. This machine doesn't wash really well. Even without the 4D system that the Series A ones have. Those do. Those, those obviously have a jet system and they do spin washes as well. This does wash well enough for me. Not have any issues with this machine. Right, so the machine's draining from the main wash now. You'll now see the display will change. So as you can see the status light has gone to rinse and the spin options have gone out. And the machine's now going to try to balance the load for the spin. So obviously you can see there that the drum is wobbling quite a lot. So the machine, well, every modern machine has balanced balance control. So basically, if one spin is unbalanced, it will just stop, as you'll see. And it will keep trying until it's balanced. On this machine, if it struggles to balance, usually this happens on the final spin. It will spin to a slightly, when it spins to full speed, it will reduce it slightly. The slowest I've seen it go is about 1200. But if you, don't, if you don't see the machine, I think I said this before, but if you don't see the machine then it, it won't notice with the dryness at the end because it's basically isn't a difference at all. 
the machine, I'll just keep doing this until it finds a balance strong and then I'm going to speed. So the machine has found a balance. I think it has slightly reduced the balance and because it was taking quite a while, so it's gave up and it's been quite unbalanced. As you can see in here, it's nice and quiet, it's really stable. As you can see, this machine uses three shock absorbers at the bottom and three spoons at the top. The shock absorbers on both machines are quite bouncy, as you can see, but that does help massively with the stability of the machine. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to put a coin on top of the machine. That just shows the stability, as you can see. I've noticed with this machine, it shakes slightly when it goes into the spin at the start, quite slowly, but once it hits spin, it's almost completely still. I can barely even feel that movement, and that is quite unbalanced. I'll show you what it's like at full, at quite a high speed as well. as well. Also the Series 8 models have a different pump in them which is quieter again. It doesn't have that pump sound that this one has. You can see it's going to rinse now. This cycle does two rinses. Every cycle apart from dark wash, wool and cottons without speed with a bigger load will do two rinses. Cottons with Cotton's normal with a smaller load, although you do two, and I believe the rest do two as well. As standard, you can obviously have more. It's filled for the rinse now, I'll show you what the rinse is like. This is the machine rinse. This machine does rinse very well. Probably the best rinsing machine I've seen. The, um, the fast spins between the wash and rinses do help really a lot. The cottons and the easy care cycles do a longer, do longer spins that are even faster between the rinse so that helps even more. This one only does shorter ones to, because it's a short cycle obviously. But it still rinses really well as you can see. There's almost no foam in that water. And that's just the first rinse. So the rinse and performance on this machine is miles better than the old one, which helps clothes come out smelling much nicer. They always smell really fresh when you come into this machine, the smell of the softener. Whereas on the old machine, it didn't as much because it struggled to rinse. So the softener got a bit like cancelled out by the detergent residue there but on this machine it's much better so I'm really happy with the mint's performance
old Beckham would we'll probably never do this. Keep that coin there. This is definitely a lot more stable than the old Beckham was. Especially at full speed. My old Beckham was really short a lot at full speed, but this doesn't. This one seems to shake more at lower speeds than it does at high speeds. But it's still, as you can see, it didn't knock that coin off even when it went into spin. So it is really stable. Now, final rinse, you'll see the softener coming through the door. I do honestly believe that this somehow helps get the smell of the softener straight into the codes better. I'm not sure what the intention was when they designed the Cascade fill, but I believe it may have been to soak the laundry faster, because that's what it seems to do. Bosch have had this feature for many years, like over 20 I think now. Someone in my family has got a really old Bosch washing machine which I've got a couple of videos of and it's got a similar cascade bill to this. So Bosch have kept the ways a lot over the years really. This is the final rinse, it does fills in stages. To let all the softener in first. Engines filled the final in. Continues to fill in nicely. Of course, the softener helps that as well. But this machine does do a really good job at rinsing. I don't think I'm ever going to need the three extra rinses that it offers. The most I've used is one for towels when I wash them on mixed clothes. Because I just like to, I like to use one extra rinse for towels. I don't really need two, but I just like to have another rinse for towels. Because I like them to be soft and fluffy. The machine is draining for the final spin now, as you can see it's added some time on because it's going to do the full length final spin because it's going to have to go bigger blows than the recommended size. As you can see the coin is still on the top, I mean touched it. I haven't touched it since the spin. Balance now. I'll skip all this out because you probably don't want to see it. So we're going to spin quite unbalanced because of the struggle to balance. As you can see, it still did not have the volume up, which is quite impressive. I think that rattle noise is just bits of rubbish being drained out of the pond. It's probably just grit left in the pot and stuff. So. I'm hoping it will take this to full 14 so I can show you the noise level and show you the stability. But it may limit because of the unbalance. As you can see, the final spin does two spin bursts before it to help get as much water out as it can before it goes into the full spin. This is to stop it from 
more to lock in and affect in the spin performance when it's at high speed. The old Beko sometimes with a big heavy load would watermark on the final spin and then it would get stuck at a slower speed and then it had to do another spin because they just weren't spinning well. So this will be the final burst now. It'll go to full speed hopefully. It might not limit with that, it doesn't look too bad. It mainly happens with like full loads of towels because when a full load like that goes into spin they can sometimes get more unbalanced as it speeds up. I think that'll be fine, that should go to 1400. So I'll film, start filming when that happens. Right, so the machine is now speeding up to its full speed. See the coin is still staying in there. The motor release is slightly louder than the old Beko was, but it rattles much less, so as a whole it's quiet at that full speed. And it will stay at this speed for three minutes on this cycle. Most of the cycles do do a long stop. On this cycle actually, I should say, with a small load it will do a shorter final spin, like I've said this before, but with a medium load it will slightly longer. And this is the full final spin. When I tried Eco 4060, it held up this speed for 15 minutes, which was absolutely crazy to be honest. I actually thought it wouldn't stop spinning. So yeah, it is nice and quiet. It does spin really well. It spins, I'd say it spins better than the old Beko, even though that was a faster spin. I do like that, even this short hour long cycle does a final spin at full length if you put a big one on it. So I'll come back when it's slowing down into the So that's the end of the final spin. Now this machine, all of the shorter cycles don't do an anti creeps, but the longer ones do, I've noticed, which I like because that saves time obviously. Unless you select reduced iron and that'll do the IBS spin and it'll do the anti crease at the end and all that. The spin and drain only cycle does do an anti crease at the end as well. But most of the short ones don't. Which is good because that saves time. So this will just go straight to end now and you'll the end signal. the end, as you can see the doors unlocked straight away. It will repeat that signal every minute or so I think and it doesn't stay on for long I've noticed. It will turn off after about 10 minutes maybe. As you can see when I open that it just goes back to the cycle that it was on. So I'll unload the load now and that's the end of the demonstration. Hope you enjoy it. And that's the end of the tribune demonstration. I hope you enjoyed this. This was my first time doing a video like this, so I probably did go on quite a bit. But yeah, that's that. Also, if you do this slightly faster. Weird, it's not doing it. It will stop. Some, I don't know why I didn't do it the first time, but yeah, that's the end of that. Hope you enjoyed. And 
if you do like this video let me know and I'll probably do more videos like this in the future, right? Thanks for watching and goodbye from me.